Hello and welcome to another video. Yes, contrary to popular belief, I am still around and uh, I think today we should explain a few things and have a look around the greenhouse. I'm going to shoot one video after another, about four videos in total, so you won't see them all at once, but you'll get the idea once I get going into it. So I'm just going to turn you around quickly and then I'll just quickly, briefly, I promise, explain where I've been, what's been going on, and then we'll have a look at those important plants. Let's get started. <laughs> And we are in, and we're talking a little bit about light today. So first of all, where have I been? Well, I'll do it as brief as I can. Basically, when it comes around to this time of year, it's midsummer now, I spend more and more time doing things that actually make money for me. I am a gardener, that's one of the many things that I do at the moment. And that means that, of course, summer is the time when I'm going to be doing loads and loads of garden jobs. I tend to spend, because I have a few things going on, um, if you've followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I have a private tuition company. I also have the gardening business and of course as the YouTube as well. It's kind of like three things, separate things on the go. And I tend to spend like a focus of time on the tuition business and then I'll spend a few months on the YouTube channel and then I'll spend a few months on the gardening. And at the moment I'm focusing on growing the gardening business. Um, that's where I've been, that's why it's been a while. I have of course had a few health problems as well. You might have known that I had the gallstones. Uh, that seems to be cleared up for now, cleared up in terms of I've passed a, a couple of stones and I feel a lot better because of it. And I'm actually really fit, which is bizarre. Uh, you can be fit at the same time but still have things wrong with you. Uh, but that's it, I'll tell it will be brief, I'm not going to go into any more detail. I'm here for now, as winter comes I will do more time in the plants uh, business or on the greenhouse business and see if I can make more videos that hopefully will be of value to people. So today we're talking about light in terms of what's going on in here and how has the lack of light, because uh, I, I do actually really like light at the moment, and um, I've had to switch a couple of the lights off for you just so that you can see because they do tend to flicker. Uh, so what happened was over the winter time last year, autumn, winter, I improved the insulation. You can see here and you might have seen the videos on it. I've got this foil insulation and it goes a little bit of the way up to, it goes up the walls and a little bit of the way up the, uh, the roofing area. You can just see it there in the distance. So what's been good about that is that it's actually saved me a lot of money. Honestly, it's really been the best thing I've done in terms of insulation. The bubble wrap, not a, not a fraction of the, of the saving capacities or the insulative properties of this stuff, especially if you install it correctly and make like a wooden framework and put a gap in between the uh, the glass panes and the insulation, which is what I did. Now, what are the downsides? And I did discuss this when I actually put the stuff up because I anticipated it. Uh, what I didn't anticipate is that two of my best grow lights, I had a Mars Hydro TS600, which is over here and is just about hanging on. You can see there's just a little strip of lights in the middle that's on there, not really providing much light at all and a Mars Hydro TS1000, which as you can see, is no longer there, it's gone. It just completely kaput, totally switched off, couldn't get it to come back on again. I did all the things that a non-technical person would normally do. I jiggled the wires, I shook it around, I gave it a thump, nothing, would you believe? So uh, I had to throw that away and I replaced it with a really cheap one here, which was about 50 pounds, cheap in terms of grow lights anyway and as expected it just it's just nowhere near as bright so the combination of losing those grow lights and also losing the light from the sun it still gets very hot in here but i lost that light from the sun which means that my streptocarpus display this year is the worst i've ever experienced in fact what you can see now is the best it's been so far normally i have blooms from March onwards. This time hardly anything I could probably do with moving that light that I bought especially over a little bit more. At the moment it's kind of over the uh, Drosera and other carnivorous plants there which are benefiting from that but these over here could definitely do with more light. Streptocarpus, contrary to popular belief, 
No, they don't like direct, direct sun through glass, what does, but what they do like is as much bright light as possible. Another downside to having this kind of insulation is it increases the humidity. Um, this year, anybody who lives in the UK will be all too aware that the weather has been atrocious, it's been constantly raining, uh, that has meant that this kind of thing has been happening more and more leaf rot on the streptocarpus you can see it in all sorts of different places again i could probably alleviate that by directing a fan on them but you know this is all more money why have i not bought more lights well it's money it's time i'm working i'm doing things uh, that involve trying to earn the money and no doubt through winter then i'll spend it and i'll try and get some more lights and try and improve what i've got so i just have to take the hit this year there are winners and losers in all these situations so i would definitely if you've got a greenhouse and you're trying to grow this kind of thing i would definitely recommend this kind of insulation of course that begs the question why bother with a greenhouse why not ju just get like a, a wooden insulated building well yeah exactly that's what i wish i would have done i can of course in the future if i want to swap all this out and do something with the light uh, i can do that but you know i bought the greenhouse and it's only after the event that i realized how much it would cost me to insulate this bearing in mind these are all tropical plants through the winter so there's one of the downsides of this kind of insulation i will get some more grow lights i do intend to do that it's all of something i can fix um, and I do think it's been worthwhile because the savings from having this proper insulation as opposed to the uh, less than ideal bubble wrap uh, have really, really helped. It made such a huge difference through winter. Uh, so yeah, pros and cons as always in the plant world, in the, uh, the greenhouse tropical plant or house plant world, whatever you want to call it. So that is basically just to show you what happens when you do block out the light. Light really, really does matter. Of course, we all know that. That was only tongue in cheek. We all know that light makes a big difference. It's made a difference to one or two other plants, but you don't want to see plants that aren't performing. You want to see plants that are performing. And I've split the videos up into, there's going to be one about cyclamen. There's going to be one about... Uh, some of the things that are thriving at the moment. I'm going to do a separate begonias one because I've so many begonias to show you. I'm even going to get out some of the ones that's in the house that you've not seen for a long time, if ever. So we'll leave it at that and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.